We've witnessed a moment in New South Wales political history. The next Premier sworn in, our political editor Andrew Clennell there on Macquarie Street. Dominic Perrottet sworn in at Government House and you've spoken to him. His first one-on-one -on -one interview was with you and you canvassed what is, I guess, on many people's minds, business, parents with kids at home and so on. What's his reopening plan? Will it remain consistent? Will he push through with it as, as articulated by his predecessor? Yes, and it's kind of an eerie scene here, Kieran, because uh, the streets are pretty empty in the CBD in Sydney, uh, save for the odd uh, masked pedestrian. But uh, that's why the focus, obviously, is all about this Monday reopening. He was indicating he won't change the dates, but that he will change some of the measures. So some of the measures supposed to come in at 80% double dose can come in at 70%. Some of the measures December 1 for the unvaccinated could come forward as well. So there'll be some tinkering, if you like, but no change of date, it seems. I guess it wouldn't have made that much of a difference, but we'll see. Uh, let's have a listen to what he said about that. And also, more generally, he just said, we've got to live with this situation with the virus and the cases and the deaths. It's not uh, a situation where we can live as we want to live. It's just the situation we're in. The 1st of December, do you want to bring that forward or is it...? No, no, we want to obviously keep the dates that are there, but it, it, ultimately there might be some areas that need to be tidied up and I'm happy to look at that. I've already raised that with um, uh, the Health Minister today and we'll have a bit of a chat this afternoon. Are the hospitals ready? Are the schools ready? Look, it's going to be a challenge, particularly on, on, on the healthcare side of things, but we have um, invested significantly in our hospitals. How many deaths a year should we expect from COVID if you live with the virus with an 80... 90% vaccination? Well, I, you know, I, I haven't looked at that and obviously my focus being in the crisis cabinet um, has been on the economy and keeping people in jobs, getting businesses open. Um, but that's something we'll certainly work through. The, the crisis cabinet, one thing. What about the national cabinet and the, the new premier's dealings with the prime minister? They haven't always been that smooth, have they? No, they haven't. Gladys Berejiklian's weren't either, but... When there's a change of state premier, it also changes the dynamic, notwithstanding New South Wales and Victoria are the big states. I guess Andrews gets a bit more seniority in that national cabinet now, which will be interesting simply because of his longevity. Let's see how that plays out. But, yeah, Scott Morrison and Dominic Perrottet have clashed, particularly when Perrottet threatened to go it alone over JobKeeper when the lockdown started in June. And the report was, well, that Scott Morrison called him a bad name. Did Scott Morrison call you an f in a meeting? <laughs> Look, I don't, I don't want to go into what happens in private conversations, uh, but Scott and I have a good relationship. Uh, it's robust, but I, I'm not, I, I, you know, I'm not going to be a doormat, right? I'm, I'm, here to, I'm here to fight for our state. And I've done that ever since I've been appointed as, as finance minister, and I'll continue to do that. Um, Scott and I have a healthy, robust relationship. Now you you gave the new you gave the new premier a bit of a chuckle in uh, in that interview with that question. It was very funny to watch, but he handled it quite well. He says, "I'm going to stand up for my state." And uh, he, one of the things he's got to do, though, and it's a challenge. While Gladys Berejiklian has the cloud over her due to the revelations or the claims out of ICAC, obviously to be tested over coming weeks, those allegations. But uh, he's got a popular premier who has preceded him. Yes, one of my favourite sayings about Macquarie Street, Kieran, is there's nothing as X as an ex-premier. And I think we're going to see that in coming weeks. It's so amazing to see these people in really powerful positions in this uh, most popular state in Australia. And then suddenly they're cactus. And it's just the little things even. The security's with Perrottet now, that they just shift straight over. Uh, but he, yeah, he can't really criticise Berejiklian because she's popular, very popular. And uh, so I think uh, he and others were uh, pretty disquieted in the Cabinet by the Maguire uh, allegations a year ago. Uh, but but she, she hung on. And uh, he, he was just more about today uh, talking about what a magnificent work ethic she had, which no one can dispute about Gladys Berejiklian and the fact that he'd learnt a fair bit from her time in the job. Do you feel like she did the wrong thing in the way that she dealt with Daryl Maguire from what you heard last year? Where do you, where do you think this is heading? 
Well, I'm not sure. Where, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Obviously, that's in the um, hands of the Independent Commission Against Corruption. I completely respect the work they do, um, and it's not going to distract us from us. I mean, you, look, base position. Gladys Berry Jicklin has been an amazing premier for our state. She's taught me a lot. Um, I have had the opportunity to work so closely with her. Her tireless dedication and servant leadership to the people of our New South Wales has been second to none. She will go down as a great premier of our state. Um, but look, there'll be those challenges. I'm not going to comment on them because I don't know the details. Yeah, so handle that pretty, pretty well, Dominic Perrottet. He's also going to have to be you know, quite nimble in getting campaigning straight away for a few by-elections, an early electoral test in the job. Yeah, I think it's a 7% margin in Andrew Constance's seat of Bega, and it's 10% John Barillaro's seat of Monero, but it's artificial because probably about 9.9% .9 of that was Barillaro's personal vote. These guys really haven't done him any favours by retiring at the time they've had. Barillaro, for example, he could have gone to the backbench. He could have stepped down uh, as Nationals leader and gone to the backbench. Andrew Stoner did that. Barry O'Farrell was caught up at ICAC. He went to the backbench. I don't think you can blame Gladys Berejiklian for wanting to leave the parliament. I guess Andrew Constance has federal ambitions. But to have two marginal seat contests, well, they won up a hunter, but that was under Berejiklian. It's a real challenge. I think they're quite lucky uh, that none of those contests, at the moment at least, are in Western Sydney. Uh, because I think they would struggle more there than perhaps in those other areas. And don't forget John Sedoti, Gareth Ward, both under a cloud. Could they leave the parliament as well? Could it become more than three by-elections? He, he definitely doesn't want that to happen. He's had Brad Hazard stay, which is a relief. Anyway, I put to him that prospect of could you face a general election. He certainly didn't rule it out. I mean, that's what happens if they lose the numbers on the, the floor before the fixed four-year terms. These by-elections, could you lose your majority? Would, oh, could you be forced to a state election even? Oh, look, I haven't looked that far ahead, Andrew, but I'm, I'm confident that the New South Wales government is in a very strong position. Um, we've, got a, we've got a good story to tell. The people of New South Wales has worked very closely with us over this period of time, um, and I believe we'll get through this challenging period and come out stronger the other side. Now to the family situation. He says he wants to be a Premier for families and for working families uh you, you and i know the balancing act the challenge of working educating and at the moment homeschooling that sort of thing i thought it was a great question from laura jays at that news conference earlier andrew do we know the challenge we don't we've got two kids each Kira. we don't know the challenge of six and as i said last hour the only time i've seen this before really is morris yemma had four under eight including twins and it's tough, it's tough. Your family's going to suffer, there's no doubt about it. And uh, yeah, I think he's got a bit of family help and his wife's fantastic, so uh, she's had a career as a lawyer as well. I mean, uh, he's lucky in that respect, but it, he's cognizant of all this when he takes it on. And Laura Jay's saying, well, you get this question as a woman, which you would, basically, I guess, questioning will you have the time for the job? If you're a female leader, you would be asked, you know, how you can manage being Premier and also a parent of six children. So I think it's fair that I ask you that today. What do you think? Well, it's, it's demanding. I mean, being, uh, being a father, um, like being a mother, like when you've, got, um, when you've got family commitments, balancing work and family life is a challenge for every single person right across the state. And, you know, ultimately, I, I think what I, what I might lose in time by gaining perspective. So perspective certainly gives you that. As for uh, the broader issue around that government, though, um, it's a big few weeks ahead, isn't it? Let's uh, be frank. When you're shaping up for October 18 is when those ICAC hearings kick off, Andrew. Yeah, and won't we all be watching? Um, but it's interesting. It kind of reminds me a bit about the 2015 election. Mike Baird and Luke Foley and O'Farrell had fallen after misleading the commission and Chris Harcher, the Liberal Minister, had been in strife and they had all these illegal donation schemes in the Nationals, but Eddie O'Bead in Labor had had the coal mine deal and there was kind of a secret pact between the two sides of politics then not to run attack ads on corruption because they were both vulnerable. You could see that again because don't forget it wasn't long ago the Labor Party were in trouble over the cash in the Audi bag at ICAC. So everyone's got skeletons here. Everyone's got skin in the game. 
Nevertheless, it's Perrottet's task when he's, had, when he's about to have scandals around him and there's been a bit of pressure on this front to paint himself as a clean skin in charge of a clean skin government because that is what the citizens of New South Wales want. I know the COVID's been imperative and they've forgiven some of Gladys's uh, accusations against Gladys Berejiklian through that, but ultimately you don't get very far... Scandal kills state governments, traditionally anyway. And so it was interesting to hear him differ from Gladys Berejiklian and John Barilaro's public statements here in saying that he didn't believe in pork barrelling with grants. Like no, it's not my position. It's not my position. Every uh, every investment the state makes uh, needs to have a different uh, make a difference to people's lives. I don't care what um, colour the electorate is in relation to its political persuasion. Uh, we have a duty to govern for all, and I'll be making sure uh, as premier that every dollar we spend. Uh, improves the lives of families right across our state. Andrew Clennell, we'll talk to you at the top of the hour. Thanks for that.